Hi guys, welcome back on this video. I'm going to be going over the endocrine system. I already covered um, diabetes mellitus type one and type two. I did a lesson on that. So if you haven't seen that already, go ahead, check that out. It doesn't have to be in order watching that than this one, but do make sure you watch that because lots of uh, test questions does do come from your endocrine, your diabetes type one and type two. Um, a couple things things else I want to talk to you guys about before I start this lesson. If you haven't done so already, uh, be sure to press that notification bell. That button lets you know every time a new video is uh, released. Now, as you guys, if you've been following me, you know this. Every Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, a video is released. And that, those videos are the ones where I actually go over questions and I teach you how to answer those questions and how to look at those questions and what the test writers are looking for. But something I've decided to start doing is actually teaching. Um, I've been teaching for years, guys, but I mean actually teaching on video and posting those those lessons. I really haven't decided the schedule of how I want to do it just because I'm so busy and I'm really trying to squeeze this in. So um, until I can figure that out, I'm just going to be uh, doing videos where I'm teaching randomly and I'm just going to go ahead and post it onto YouTube. But if you press that notification button, whenever I have a new video released, you'll be notified instead of waiting Sunday 1 p.m. Okay, I got that out the way. One more thing I want to talk to you guys about. Don't forget, I do have audio lessons available on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. If you have a test coming up and you just really need that extra push and you need to hear my voice telling you, this is important, you need to know this, you need to know that, make sure you go onto my website, Nexus Nursing Institute, and look at the lessons I have available. Um, I haven't recorded in a while, but I'm gonna start recording again and just adding onto that library of lessons that I have available for you. Also, if you're a passive, if you're into passive learning, if you have, you know, TikTok or Instagram or Facebook, I also do questions on there. It's not as extensive as I do here on a YouTube where my videos are anywhere from about half an hour to an hour and a half. On there, my videos are about one to three minutes. But, you know, if you're working out or you're just scrolling and you just want some practice, that's a great platform to check out some questions. All right, guys. So with that, with me getting all of that out of the way, let's get started. My screen's being shared. So the first thing you can see is the endocrine system. And something important for you guys to know, these hormones, you have to understand the glands that control those hormones. So if you take a look, they put my mouse right here. This is where I am right now, okay? So for growth hormone, that's the hormone that what? Makes you get taller, right? The, anterior, the anterior pituitary gland is what controls growth hormone. Next is ADH, that's antidiuretic hormone. That is a hormone that makes you hold on to all of your urine, right? So you're not urinating all over the place. It makes you hold on to all of your fluid. Now that's controlled by the posterior pituitary gland. Next, we have your T3 and T4. Those are the thyroid hormones. And you know, when that, whenever you think of thyroid hormones, I want you to think of metabolism. So when you have an increased metabolism, you're, you're burning calories very fast, right? When you have a decreased metabolism, you're burning calories very slow. So T3 and T4, that's controlled by your thyroid gland right here on your neck. Parathyroid hormones, um, that's controlled by your parathyroid, which sits on, uh, those are four nodules that actually sit on your thyroid gland. And just like I told you, when you're thinking of thyroid hormone, I want you to think of metabolism. When you're thinking of parathyroid hormones, I want you to think of calcium. So if the parathyroid is increased, the patient's going to have increased calcium in the blood. If the parathyroid hormone is decreased, the patient's going to have decreased calcium in where? The blood. And I say this because a lot of students get confused. They think it's the bone. No, we're talking about the blood, okay? Next, the glucocorticoids, glucocorticoids cortisol. What controls that? The adrenal gland, right? And the cortisol is very important fight or flight, right? And then last is insulin. The pancreas controls that. Remember, insulin is made by the beta cells in the islets of Langerhans. That's in the pancreas, so don't forget that. Oh, it looks like it might rain. I hope not. Okay, um, let me scroll down a little bit. Okay, parathyroid gland relies on the presence of vitamin D to work. Remember, I told you, when you're thinking of parathyroid, you're thinking about what? Calcium. Well, guess what? In order for calcium to be absorbed, 
you got to have vitamin D. And so that's why the parathyroid gland relies on the presence of vitamin D to work because you can have as much calcium in the world. But if you don't have that vitamin D to absorb the calcium, is it going to do you any good? No. Next, palpate the thyroid uh, gently can cause thyroid storm in a patient with hyperthyroidism. So remember I told you when you're thinking of the thyroid, you think of what? Metabolism. So if the patient has hyperthyroidism, which means everything is increased, blood pressure increased, heart rate increased, even their peristalsis increased, right? They have hyperthyroidism. Remember, the thyroid gland sits right here. You want to palpate very gently because what you don't want to cause is thyroid storm, which is a medical emergency. And we'll talk about thyroid storm in a little bit. After removal of the pituitary gland, you're going to watch for hypocortisolism and temporary diabetes insipidus. So um, if the patient had some type of surgery in that pituitary gland that's located in the brain, guys, it has to be removed, you're going to be concerned about that uh, cortisol level being dangerously low and diabetes insipidus. What controls that diabetes, uh, um, diabetes insipidus? Remember, antidiuretic hormone. Do not, con do not confuse diabetes insipidus with diabetes mellitus. Diabetes mellitus is when your blood sugar is too high, right? Diabetes insipidus has nothing to do with blood sugar. Diabetes insipidus has to do with urine and ADH. So remember, antidiuretic hormone, that's what makes you hold on to all of, um, um, all of your fluids, all of your urine. Well, if a patient has diabetes insipidus, that's the opposite. That makes you... Um, that makes you urinate all over the place because why? You don't have enough of the antidiuretic hormone. So if a patient were to have some type of surgery where that pituitary gland has been removed, you're going to be concerned about hypocortisolism, but you're also going to be concerned about diabetes insipidus. They're going to be urinating all over the place because of the lack of antidiuretic hormone. Okay, moving on. My exedema, hypothyroidism. So your thyroid is here. You can have increased or decreased. Hypothyroidism or myxedema is when the thyroid gland is decreased. That metabolism, remember I told you when you think of thyroid, I want you to think of metabolism. That metabolism is down, okay? Thyroid function is down. What are the thyroid hormones? TH, your T3 and T4, right? Thyroid hormone. So if a patient has hypo thyroidism, which means that the thyroid function is down, your T3 and T4 is going to be what? Down. Okay. Now your um, TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, what actually stimulates the thyroid to make more T3 and T4, that's going to be the opposite way. That's going to be up. Why? Think about it. If a patient has hypothyroidism, the thyroid function is down. So the T3 and T4 is going to be down. Guess what? The body's always going to try to survive no matter what. So the body's going to say, hey, T3 and T4 is down. What are we going to do? And so the, um, the, oh my gosh, <laughs> guys, I can't think. Um, and the pituitary gland was, will make uh, the body secrete what more? Uh, thyroid stimulating hormone because the thyroid stimulating hormone, the TSH, that's what makes the T3 and T4 go up. So whenever you see the T3 and T4 down, you're going to expect the TSH to be up because the TSH is going to be what makes the T3 and T4 go back up, okay? So they're going to be opposites. You have to understand the T3 and T4, the thyroid hormones are always going to follow what the thyroid is doing. So if the thyroid is low, the T3 and T4 is also going to be low and the TSH is going to be the opposite. It's going to be what? Up, okay? So we're talking about uh, hypothyroidism, myxedema, it's hyposecretion of thyroid hormone resulting in decreased metabolic rate. Everything is slowing down, guys. Brain function slowing down. So patients being confused. You ask them a question, it takes them a while to even process what you're saying, okay? Brain function's down. Heart is down. Bradycardia. Blood pressure is down, hypotension, even peristalsis is down. Patients, what? Constipated. Everything is down. 
So it can uh, result in coma, acute illness, rapid uh, cessation of medication, hypothermia. This patient with hypothyroidism, I'm sorry guys, they're doing work around the house, so I heard a noise and I flipped to the left. Uh, this patient with hypothyroidism, they get cold easily because their metabolism's down, everything is slow. So that's the patient you're always gonna give a blanket to because they're always gonna be cold. Let's look at some assessment. Think hypometabolic state. You ever had someone chunky, I'm so using the wrong term, but I'll use myself as an example because you know I'm not skinny. I'm a chunky girl, right? You know, you have someone chunky like me and I'll be like, oh, my metabolism just low. That's not true, guys. I like ice cream. I eat a lot. But when I say the metabolism slow, that means you're not what? Burning calories. So when you think of hypothyroidism, think of someone um, that isn't burning as much, many calories, right? Everything's down. Cardiovascular, down. They're going to have bradycardia. They may have anemia, hypotension, GI. Everything is down. Nothing's moving. Patient's going to be at risk for constipation. Neurological, lethargy, fatigue, weak, weakness, paresthesia, everything is slow, guys. Look at integumentary. Integumentary, I'm right here. Integumentary, patient may have a goiter. By the way, sorry about the noise. I live right next to, I live right next to the airport and a uh, major highway. Um, goiter, with the goiter, guys, a patient can have a goiter if they have hyper or hypothyroidism, okay? Goiter, they're going to have dry skin, dry hair, loss of body hair. Let me explain to you why. Remember I told you everything is slow in hypothyroidism. Even blood flow is slow. Remember, blood, that's what's carrying the oxygen, the vitamins, and nutrients that's supposed to get to the skin to make the skin nice. And, and shiny and make the hair nice and moisturized and feed the hair so the hair can grow nice and long. But if they have hypothyroidism and everything is slow, including the blood that's supposed to transport all of these minerals to the hair and the skin, you think the hair and the skin are gonna be nice? No, it's not being fed that oxygen, vitamin, nourishment that it needs. So that's why you're gonna see the skin's gonna be dry. Patient's gonna have hair loss, it's falling out because it's not getting the nourishment that it needs, okay? Metabolic rate, I'm right here. Metabolic rate is decreased. So they're going to always be cold. They're going to gain weight because they're not um, uh, burning calories the way they should be. Okay? They're going to be puffy, edema. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hypoglycemia. Now, a therapeutic management, very important, guys. You better be checking that heart rate because didn't I say the heart rate's going to be down. Make sure they have a, an, a clear airway, monitor their medication therapy. Um, let's talk about medication therapy, Synthroid, level thyroxine. So if they have hypothyroidism, uh, we're going to give them medication to increase the thyroid function. Okay. Level thyroxine. Now think about it. Think about what this medication does. If a patient has hypothyroidism, everything is down. And we're giving them level thyroxine. We're giving them Synthroid to bring everything back up. Aren't you going to be concerned about that medication worked a little bit too well? That medication causes them to go from hypotension to hypertension. That med medication causing them to go from bradycardia to tachycardia or even dysrhythmias, right? We got to make sure that patient doesn't, that medication doesn't work too well. And then we have another set of problems in our hand because that medication is going to get the patient going, 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 going. Do you think that's a good medication to give at night when the patient's trying to go to sleep? No, we're going to give that medication in the morning so that they're going, 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 and they can burn off those calories. So by the time it's nighttime, they can go to sleep. So that's why it says take in the morning before breakfast to prevent insomnia. And very important, guys, they're going to take that Synthroid on an empty stomach. We're going to assess their thyroid hormone levels. We're going to look at the T3, the T4, and the TSH. Remember, the T3 and T4 is always going to match what the thyroid is doing. So if the patient has hypothyroidism, that T3 and T4 is going to be down and the TSH is going to be up. But as they're getting medication, what do we expect to see? We expect to see that T3 and T4 start to go up and the TSH start to go down 
if the medication is working the way it's supposed to. We're going to monitor and administer glucose as needed because remember with hypoglycemia patient hypoglycemia with hypothyroidism the patient's at risk for hypoglycemia and what can kill someone faster hypo or hyperglycemia hypo so we're definitely going to give them glucose as needed we're going to be checking their glucose to make sure that the glucose isn't too low and remember your normal glucose range is 70 to 110 we're going to um, give them iv fluids as needed monitor and administer glucose as needed and remember my eczema they're going to be cold hypothermia so we're going to always give them a blanket right that's hypothyroidism now let's talk about hyperthyroidism that is the opposite that's when that thyroid function is working too well patients going 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 the metabolism is what up everything's up heart rate up peristalsis up so that means the patient's got what diarrhea even their brain functions up that patient patient's talking a mile a minute they can't stop because everything's going 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 that's hyperthyroidism remember i told you the t3 and t4 is always going to match what the thyroid gland is doing so if the patient has hyperthyroidism which means the thyroid function is up what do you think the t3 and the t4 is going to be up and the TSH is going to be the opposite. The TSH is going to be down. Why? Because the patient already has too much T3 and T4. Why would they need thyroid stimulating hormone? Because remember, thyroid stimulating hormone stimulates the body to make even more T3 and T4. If they're already up with T3 and T4, they don't need any more. So we're going to expect to see the T3 and T4 up and the TSH down in hyperthyroidism. Now let's look at the definition for hyperthyroidism. It says excess secretion of thyroid hormone from thyroid gland resulting in increased metabolic rate, accelerated physical and mental function. Causes Graves disease, which is um, a type of hyper, hyperthyroidism, guys. And this is autoimmune. And when you see that word autoimmune or you hear autoimmune, I want you to think of the body basically attacking itself. This disorder is coming from within. It's not coming from an exogenous source. What else can cause hyperthyroidism? Too much secretion of TSH because TSH makes what? T3 and T4, right? So it could be excess secretion of TSH, a tumor could cause that, or medication reaction. That patient taking too much of that synthroid can throw them into hyperthyroidism, okay? Thyroid storm, which is a medical emergency. I mentioned that earlier. Um, this is a medical crisis. This is when the T3 and T4 are through the roof to the point that it can kill the patient. How can the patient go into thyroid storm due to infection, stress, or trauma? Think about it. If you're sick, doesn't your body need energy to fight that infection, right? What are T3, T4? Increases metabolism, increases everything. So a patient can have an infection and the body that's trying to help the patient survive, they need that energy to fight that infection, that T3 and T4 goes through the roof. Same thing with stress and trauma, okay? It can cause tachycardia, dysrhythmias, hypertension, seizures, because remember, even brain function is going, 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 going to the point that that patient can go into seizures. So what do we expect that patient with hyperthyroidism to look like assessment? T3 and T4 is going to be up. TSH is going to be down. When they do a radioactive um, uptake scan, that's a diagnostic test. It's going to be positive. Patient can have a goiter. And remember, that goiter you can see in hyper and hypothyroidism. So when you see goiter, don't automatically think hypothyroidism because people with hyperthyroidism have goiters as well. Bulging eyes. Think about, um, what's her name? She had a talk show, a gossip. Oh my gosh. I can't think. Somebody put in the comments. It's going to come to me later. But she had hyperthyroidism, bulging eyes. What is her name? Wendy Williams, right? That bulging eyes, what's it called? It's called exophthalmos, okay? Cardiac, tachycardia, hypertension, palpitations. That patient's gonna feel like their heart's coming out of their chest. Neurologically speaking, they're gonna have hand tremor, agitation, hyperactive um, uh, reflexes. Sensory, there goes that word I was telling you about. 
exophthalmos, that's some bulging eyes. We see that a lot in Graves' disease, broad vision, heat intolerance. Remember when we were talking about hypothyroidism, the patient was always cold. Well, in hyperthyroidism, they're going, 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 going. They get hot, right? So they have heat intolerance. You're going to put them in a cool room. And integument, Terry, they're going to have fine, thin hair. Reproductive system, they're going to have amenorrhea, decreased libido. And then as for ne metabolic, you guys know that the rate's going to be increased. They're going, going, going. They're going to be losing weight. They're going to be burning calories at an accelerated rate. Therapeutic management, put them in a cool room. You're going to give them anti-thyroid medication. So remember for hypothyroidism, we were giving level thyroxine, right? For hyperthyroidism, we're giving anti-thyroid medications, which is your PTU, okay? We're going to be checking um, uh, the heart, cardiac monitoring, patent airway, Listen, that patient's already going, 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 going. Do they need any stimulants? No. So you're going to tell them to stay away from stimulants, such as coffee, tea, soda, that have caffeine in it. You're going to teach them to protect their eyes. Remember that exophthalmos, their eyes are bulging out, right? So um, some patients, their eyes bulge out so much, their eyelid can't close. They can't blink properly. And so their eyeball gets dried out and they end up getting like corneal ulceration. So you're going to teach them to continually moisturize their eyes. Radioactive iodine, that's also a treatment, okay? Taking up thyroid gland and it destroys the cells. Guys, this is radioactive. And then when the patient takes this and it destroys the cells, those cells are gone for good. This radioactive iodine, this therapy, can cause that patient that originally had hyperthyroidism it can throw them in the opposite end and cause them to have hypothyroidism because it's literally destroying thyroid cells. So while that patient is taking that iodine-131, which is that radioactive iodine, you're going to teach them they cannot get pregnant with this medication. You're going to be monitoring their lab values because we don't want that medication to work too well and we threw them into hypothyroidism. So you're going to consistently be watching that T3 and T4 and the TSH. Let's say that patient had to have that uh, a thyroid uh, hormone surgically removed. You're going to monitor the airway. Where's that thyroid sitting? Right here. Right here, guys, where your airway is. So you're going to monitor airway, have them in a semi fowler's position. You're going to assess the surgical site for bleeding. You're going to monitor them for hypocalcemia because remember, right here on the thyroid gland, where are the parathyroids? Right here sitting on the thyroid gland. What are the parathyroids uh, um, responsible for? Calcium. So that's why we're going to be concerned about hypocalcium because when they take out this thyroid gland, that par those parathyroids get removed. What do you expect to happen? Patient can go in hypocalcemia. Okay. So we're going to make sure we have calcium gluconate right there available for that patient because hypocalcemia will cause muscle and nerve irritation and excitation. And we do not want that. Minimal talking during the immediate post-op period. Remember, they just had surgery right here. For pi partial thyroidectomy, we're going to be monitoring their temperature. Post-op, elevated temp, even by one degree, may indicate impending thyroid crisis. Remember, that is a medical emergency, guys. That is when the T3 and T4 is through the roof. That can cause the patient to die. So you are going to be checking that temperature very, very, very closely. And if, if that temp goes up, even by one degree, you're doing what? Calling the doctor. When it comes to hyperthyroidism, think of Michael Jackson in Thriller. And I know a lot of you guys are too young to even remember um, that song or the video. If you don't, please go Google it. Uh, YouTube it, watch it on YouTube. But anyway, Michael Jackson and Th Thriller, remember how he looked? Skinny, nervous, bulging eyes up all night, right? Heart beating fast. Insomnia, insomnia is a side effect of excess thyroid hormones. Remember those thyroid hormones make you go, 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 go. Even your brain is go, 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 going. All right? And so um, it'll make you not want to sleep. So we talked about thyroid which is metabolism. And we talked about parathyroid, which is, well, we haven't talked about parathyroid. I'm just joking, guys. We're about to talk about parathyroid right now. Just joking, just joking. All right. 
We'll talk about hypo, then hyper. So remember how we just talked about the thyroid gland, which was all about metabolism. It's right here, right? Now we're going to talk about the parathyroid glands, those four nodules that sit on the thyroid hormone. The parathyroid glands control what? Calcium. So if a patient has hypo parathyroidism, the calcium in the blood is going to be what? Low. Patient's going to have hypo calcemia. And so you need to think about all those um, adverse effects that come with hypocalcemia. Hypoparathyroidism, I'm right here. This is decreased calcium um, in the blood. So you want to, for that type of patient, you want to implement a high calcium because their calcium is low, a high calcium, low phosphorus diet, you're going to give them vitamin D because remember, you can have as much calcium as you want. If you don't have that vitamin D to absorb the calcium, what's the point? So make sure you provide vitamin D because it helps with the absorption of calcium. Watch out for true souls or trost sex signs. Those are signs and symptoms of hypocalcemia. Remember, hypocalcemia causes nerve and muscle irritation and excitation. True souls that's that tetany you see, right? You take the patient's blood pressure and you see their hand doing this or Cholstec where you run your finger along the face and they do that, right? Think of cats. These are signs and symptoms, convulsions, arrhythmia, tetany, spasm, strider. <gasps> you hear strider, that's a medical emergency. Strider is what you hear when the patient's airway closing is closing up and air is trying to get through an occluded airway. Hyperthyroidism, that's when the calcium is too high. So you're going to put them on a low calcium, high phosphorus diet. Remember, calcium, calcium, phosphorus go the opposite way. Signs and symptoms of hypoparathyroidism, which means that calcium, excuse me, I'm speaking too fast. Signs and symptoms of hyperparathyroidism, which means that calcium is too high. Fatigue, polyuria, muscle weakness, not excitation. We're doing the opposite. Muscle weakness renal calculi. Why renal calculi? Think about it. if that calcium is too high in the blood, there's just all this calcium in the blood. What do you think when they all get to the kidneys? They're going to clump up and cause kidney stones. Yeah. Back in joint pain, you're going to monitor for bone deformities. Why? Because if all that calcium is in the blood, what happened to the bones? Because calcium is supposed to be in the bones, right? That's what makes the bone strong, but all the calcium's in the blood. So the patient's going to have poor, weak bones. They're going to be at risk for fractures or deformities. So before surgery, before the patient gets that parathyroid gland removed, if they have hyperthyroidism, hyperparathyroidism, and they're going to get parathyroidectomy, which means they're going to get the parathyroid glands removed. Before they get it removed, that patient's going to be on a low calcium, high phosphorus diet. Remember guys, calcium and phosphorus have a what? Inverse relationship. And it says for patients who are not candidates for the parathyroidectomy, they're going to get di diuretics. And let me explain why. What do diuretics do? They make you urinate. So all of that calcium that's stuck in the blood can come out in the urine. So they're going to get diuretics and they're going to get hydration because we don't want that patient to be dehydrated. They get dehydrated. All that calcium that's in the blood is going to what? Clump up and cause stones. So we're going to make sure we give them um, hydration in combination, help reduce the serum calcium. The best way to evaluate a fluid status, guys, I cannot stress this enough. NCLEX asks about this all the time. The best way to evaluate a patient's fluid status is daily weight. It's not skin turgor. It's not INO. It is daily weight. That is the best indicator of patient's fluid status. And I cannot tell you how many students get that wrong. So please listen to Professor D when she says it one more time. The best evaluation of a patient's fluid status. Is it skin tiger? No. Is it INO? No. It is daily weight. Okay, guys, I'm going to stop here because I have another meeting to run to. I have no idea what the next video is going to be. Maybe I'll continue, but we'll see. I hope you found this video helpful. I did have a student 
on the last video, they asked for some mental health and I haven't done anything in mental health. So I don't remember who that student was, but whoever asked for mental health, it's coming soon. I haven't forgotten about you. Guys, I hope you found this video to be helpful. Please, if you want to support my channel, the best way to support this channel, guys, is to share my content. Tell people about me so they can come and subscribe. If you haven't done so already, guys, please go ahead, press that like button, press that subscribe button, press that notific notification button so every time a new video is released, you can know and you can watch it and you can support this channel. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys, and you'll be seeing me on the next one.